From MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. Two men steal cookies from Girl Scouts, but police officers make sure the girls had a happy day. It happened so quick. I didn't even see him because that's how quick it was. Plus, an update on ongoing financial problems at Billings Clinic. Things have really changed. And amazing new video from the weekend train derailment in western Montana. Good morning and welcome to Montana this morning on this Tuesday, April 4th. Thank you for joining us. New this morning, Montana is just one of a few states in the country that doesn't allow for charter schools. Efforts in the past to bring them to our state have failed at the legislature, but just last week, two bills, both with an unknown cost to public education, passed on to the Senate. I spoke with a Billings mom who's interested in opening a charter school for kids with dyslexia, like her son Henry. They tried private school when it was time for him to go to kindergarten, but then lost the early intervention state services he was receiving. Uh, we have since switched him to public school, um, and that is, it's going really well. They've been great to work with. They do have some resources available to him, um, but because of the nature of his disability, um, he learns a different way. His dyslexia, it's not just difficulty learning to read. Wright wants to access state funding to create a new option for kids like Henry. I think that having a school for students with dyslexia would be an amazing opportunity just to make sure that they are getting those services that they need, um, but are also with other students who are learning the same way that they are so that they can stay on track with their cohort and their peers. There's two bills that could create this option this session. HB 562 is sponsored by Billings Republican Representative Sue Vinton. HB 549 is sponsored by Great Falls Republican Representative Fred Anderson. They're similar but contain key differences in how much they could cost and what regulations the bill would require charters to follow. Here's Billings Public School Superintendent Greg Upham's take on the two measures. Yeah, I'm not opposed to any um, charter bills other than the ones that the one that's uh, that's being sponsored by Ms. Vinton I have concerns with because it doesn't have any regulation over it. Uh, Representative Anderson's bill, uh, the charter school is is fine. I, we we have a a form of a charter school in our career center. So um, I think it leads to innovativeness and, and allows for some change. In early March, Governor Gianforte signed a public schools funding measure that added about 86 million to the state's K through 12 base aid funding. Both HB 562 and HB 549 would allow for charter schools to access that funding as well, with no limit on the number of schools that could be established. This makes the cost of the measures difficult to estimate. Melissa Romano is a House Democrat from Helena who sits on the Education Committee. She was Montana's Teacher of the Year in 2018 and does not agree with Republicans' call for school choice. This is not what the public wants. The public wants public money going to public schools with licensed teachers who are top-notch and who have accountability measures. And none of these charter schools have that. In a statement after the bill passed out of House Appropriations, she said whether or not it happens immediately, these dangerous bills will funnel unlimited amounts of public tax dollars to unregulated, unlicensed, and unaccountable schools. It's unclear if Governor Gianforte would sign either of those bills if they made it to his desk. A spokesperson tells MTN the governor will carefully consider the bills in their final forms when the legislature sends them to him. And happening today, all three finalists for the Billings Public School Superintendent job will be in Billings for a public forum. You can attend. Dr. Erwin Garcia, a Houston, Texas superintendent, Brendan Koch, the current SD2 executive director, and Tom Peck, Lewistown superintendent, will be fielding questions from residents and the school board. That's tonight at 6 at the Lincoln Center. Another forum is also scheduled for tomorrow night. So if you've got kids in SD2 or you are interested in that superintendent uh, pick, be sure to attend that at the Lincoln Center tonight. Miller Robson, good yep. morning to you. Hey, good morning. Uh, welcome to Tuesday, everybody. It's going to be our Tuesday. coldest day of the week. Some of us may not get much warmer than we are right now. A lot of us staying below the freezing mark. But what if I told you <laughs> 70 degree weather may be in the forecast? What? Moving forward. Uh, did what? I say that? I sort of Shh. don't believe it. Well, we'll take a look at that coming up in just a bit. You wouldn't know it this morning, though. It is a little chillier than average. It was colder than uh, average yesterday. Our high only got up to uh, 42, so a good what, 12 degrees below the norm, 10 degrees below average with our overnight low getting down to about 22. Breezy at times yesterday with a top gust of 26 miles an hour. It was a dry day, so we're starting the month off on a dry note, but for the year we're still pacing ahead. The further south you go into Montana and of course down in Wyoming, a better chance you're going to see some of that heavy snowfall. So we go along today and we're going to show you that with the main forecast coming up right now. Maybe a few flurries in Billings not showing there at the airport where we're seeing some clouds. 
24 right now at Logan feels like 11 winds out of the northeast at about 16 miles an hour. See those temperatures across the area, mainly in the 20s. Farther north you go, it may not get much warmer than we are right now, but we'll go with highs in the 20s and 30s today. Our coldest day of the week, and then we warm up, and boy, maybe a big warm up on the way. We'll take a look here in just a bit. All righty, Miller, thank you. And we're following the latest now on a stabbing in North Billings. A woman is in the hospital with life-threatening injuries. Police arrived at a home on the 700 block of North 24th Street yesterday afternoon, finding the victim covered in stab wounds. No arrests have been made, but police say they are investigating. And new this morning, we're learning the Chinese spy balloon that flew over Billings gathered intelligence from American military sites. U.S. officials maintain the information had limited additive value, but the FBI has learned the device was able to transmit information back to Beijing and was not just a weather balloon like China claimed. The balloon made it all the way to the Atlantic Ocean before it was shot down off the coast of South Carolina. And today, former President Trump will be booked and arraigned at the Manhattan Criminal Courthouse. NYPD officers installed barricades outside anticipating protests, but city officials say there are currently no credible threats of violence. The indictment is still sealed, but Trump will likely be charged with falsifying business records in the first degree, which is a felony. This is related to his alleged role in hush money paid to adult film star Stormy Daniels in 2016. Continuing our coverage this morning, with pay cuts and a benefits pause hanging over employees, Billings Clinic is finally going on record, saying some of its future plans are not changing. The hospital is still exploring a merger with Western Montana's Logan Health and moving forward with plans to become a level one trauma center. We're also learning Billings Clinic is joining a growing list of hospitals all over the country, now making cost-saving moves. Q2's Jackie Coffin reports. A memo sent Friday to Billings Clinic employees from their CEO says the hospital is losing money in an unsustainable way. And to get out of the black, they're going to be making cuts of four and a half million dollars a month. Billings Clinic confirmed the authenticity of the memo sent to MTN by a hospital employee. The memo shows a dire financial situation and outlines the hospital's plans to cut pay for doctors up to 5%, suspend company contributions to employee retirement plans, and freeze hiring company-wide, among other cost-saving measures. But looking around the United States, Billings Clinic isn't the only hospital facing financial hardship. I think right now, uh, hospitals are really enduring the worst of the labor shortage. Pat Barkey, director of the Bureau of Business and Economic Research at the University of Montana, says two big drivers of financial struggles in hospitals are the demand for non-emergency care and the labor shortage. You put those together and, you know, it's it's been a very challenging environment. Becker's Healthcare, a nationwide hospital magazine, counts 33 hospitals and health systems cutting jobs as of March 31st, with many in Pennsylvania, North Carolina, Ohio, California, and beyond. Billings Clinic is not on this list and has not yet spoken publicly about the cuts. But Barkey says he senses a greater conversation about the state of U.S. health care on the horizon. Healthcare has long had the reputation of being the recession proof part of the economy, but things have really changed. And uh, the, the go go growth of healthcare, especially recently, has not been there. In Billings, Jackie Coffin, MTN News. And now we head to some new must see video from the 25 car train derailment in Paradise, Montana over the weekend. Check out the surveillance video from nearby Quinn's Hot Springs showing the train crumbling and spilling its contents into the Clark Fork River. There's still no timeline for the cleanup there, but several cars were hauled away yesterday. Montana Rail Link has learned along with all this spilled beer, a small amount of fuel did seep into the soil. They're doing remediation work, but maintain there's currently no threat to the public. And a local woman is speaking out about a bed bug infestation at Sage Tower here in Billings. Janet Rivera moved her disabled brother into the senior living facility a while back. She says everything was great at first, but after a management change, things started going downhill. Janet finally moved her brother out after his mattress became overrun with bed bugs. Now he's living at St. John's, where rent is twice as expensive as Sage Tower. And I won't totally blame management because I know that's all based on funding for the subsidized housing. I think it's the whole system that's at fault. People like this need assistance. I guess for me it's frustrating when I see us, our politicians trying to cut funding for some of these social services. 
We were alerted to the issues at Sage Tower just a few weeks after a bed bug outbreak we reported on at uh, Billings Senior Facility, Fraser Tower. We also checked in with a health inspector. He says 25% of complaints come from apartment complexes. He didn't have data specific to seniors, but acknowledges living conditions at facilities where many seniors live could be improved. This weekend, a couple of grown men stole Girl Scout cookies from a troop selling them outside of Walmart. But as Q2's Haley Monaco reports, Billings police made sure those scouts could still end the day with a smile. We all love Girl Scout cookies, and most of us would never steal them. However, on Sunday, one scout's mother says an entire case of Thin Mint cookies were stolen outside of a Billings Walmart. Selling Girl Scout cookies. Selling cookies, that's nine-year-old Juliet's favorite part of being a Girl Scout. But late Sunday afternoon, just 15 minutes after Juliet's troop started selling cookies outside a Walmart, two men walked up and stole from the young girls. It happened so quick. I didn't even see him because that's how quick it was. Juliet's mom, Marilyn Navarro, says she was helping the girls when she heard another mom yell that someone had taken a case. It was a case of Thin Mint, so a case has 12 and $5 a box at $60. Navarro said they called the police, who quickly took a report, but then, look what they did next, bought some cookies themselves. Ashley Picard with Girl Scouts of Montana and Wyoming says that the troop will not be responsible for paying that $60 to cover the stolen cookies. This troop is not going to be out that money because we will take care of it once we get the details of that police report on file for us. Picard says thankfully, thefts like these are rare. We really don't see it too often. It may happen once a year. We haven't seen a surge in it. But even once was scary enough for all involved. A few of the girls were crying. It's disgusting to steal from girls, from little girls, or anybody in general. In Billings, Haley Monaco, MTN News. Thank you, Haley, and it's a big day in Helena. Bills that appropriate state money, affect state revenues, or propose changes to the state constitution have to pass through the House or Senate today, or they will be off the table. Yesterday, the Montana House worked 12 straight hours taking on four proposals to amend the state constitution. The biggest would change the way Montana Supreme Court judges are chosen from statewide elections to having the governor appoint justices, who would then have to be confirmed by the Senate. It passed its first reading but lost some Republican support, meaning it won't pass unless two more Republicans change their minds today during the final vote. Democrats say they will oppose all constitutional changes. I think what we've heard loud and clear from Montanans is that full stop, they're not interested in changing our constitution. I think that has been what I have heard the most loudly across all ideas. Meanwhile, the Senate passed a bill with bipartisan support to allow marijuana tax revenue to go toward county road maintenance. Two constitutional amendments also passed their first readings, one to establish a mental health trust fund, and the other has to do with legislative districts. It would prohibit the redistricting commission from considering any data pertaining to the political affiliation of electors or prior election results. Both bills will have their final votes today. Many maintain that these men are missing their minds, messing with a moose in Montana. Bothering this beast by Big Sky could have brought these buddies broken bones or behind bars. Q2's Kagan Harsha reports. A little closer. <clears throat> Go on. You guys are f idiots. If you live in Montana, you know messing with a moose is a bad idea. But these two guys near Big Sky didn't get the memo. Get him. Yeah, get him. Yes. Get him leading to a close call that easily could have turned deadly. I, I mean, this is a good example of, of, you know, what can happen when you're, when you're too close to wildlife. And, and moose can be very defensive, you know, of their space, especially if there's, you know, if, if they have young with them. Or Morgan Jacobson is with Montana Fish, Wildlife and Parks, which is now investigating what happened. Harassing wildlife is illegal in Montana, punishable by up to six months in jail and up to a $1,000 fine. You, you know, you can enjoy them from a distance. Um, you don't you don't have to be, you know, right up this close. This is way too close. Um, and it, it puts you at risk, puts people around you at risk. Good advice. These two men didn't heed. It's unclear where they're from or if the man who slipped on the ice was injured by the charging animal. The video cuts out, but FWP says the two better cut it out. An example of what not to do in a Montana ski town where encounters with wildlife are common. You know, there's wildlife there all the time. Uh, and, uh, and, you know, if, if we're going to share these spaces with wildlife, we have to uh, live responsibly. In Big Sky, Kagan Harsha, MTN News.